Okay, so we have just one example of change of variable. It is very simple. There are two uh, on two ends of, of a function. So uh, in this particular example, when the uh, we're talking about location, um, so a function is represents location as a function of time. X is time. Y is the uh, location. Okay, the and, uh, substitution. There could be confusion about about there. What what is that that's being uh, measured by those? So so it's the uh, um, the the variables are give you quantities of uh, of the same quantity presumably of say length. Uh, in different units, so it gives you the number of, for the same length, it give you, gives you the number of either inches or the number of, of feet for the same, for the same length. So, uh, so it's a conversion, it's, it's uh, confusing when it converts, conver c converting uh, uh, inches, uh, one inch into, into uh, one, uh, into feet, or vice versa, uh, but more likely you're converting uh, the number of feet into the number of, of inches. Same, same with uh, uh, with time, okay. So what we have discovered, the conclusions are we more or less confirmed that uh, they make sense uh, based on the on uh, the chain rule, is that uh, uh, what is that at the bottom? So if we are switching, if we're switching from um, uh, first of all, we switch from uh, from seconds to minutes. Then what happens is we uh, we multiply um, uh, the velocity. The velocity gets multiplied by 60. Uh, at the same time, if we switch from uh, what is it uh, from feet to inches, then we multiply by 12. Okay. So um, so there are other examples, but at this point we can we can ask or naturally ask ourselves the question: What happens if we are talking about antiderivatives? Okay, so in other words, in other words, uh, the the change of variable is the same. Change of units is the same, right? So, well, you could still uh, uh, measure switch, switch from inches to, to feet, or vice versa. Uh, but uh, uh, suppose our function then is not the location as a function of time, but what is this velocity as a function of time? Okay, so so then you can you can uh, you can uh, imagine that uh, everything well uh, everything will will go in the in the opposite in the opposite direction, uh, so with uh, uh, we would have to the end in these two uh, we would have to divide by sixty and divide by twelve respectively. So we'll get to that later. I would just want to consider a couple of more examples before that um, uh, some of, of differentiation that is um, and by, uh, of, of other changes of variables. And one that I have in mind is uh, well the temperature. So the temperature, so another example, and uh, the temperature, what we're talking about, changing uh, uh, Fahrenheit into Celsius, which might be accompanied by also switch, uh, uh, switch of time, switch of, of units of time. So this is the, the diagram that I have. So um, uh, once again, this is familiar, so from seconds to minutes. And, and then there's our function that uh, gives us the, well, uh, yeah, that we, we switch, no, wait a minute, we switch from minutes to seconds. So the original is in the middle, this is the function, but we're not talking about locations function of time anymore, but here uh, I want to talk about like uh, temperature as a function of time. So uh, the temperature here, I put F, which stands for Fahrenheit. Okay, so, so this is a, a familiar situation. Uh, we have a function that represents uh, um, temperature in Fahrenheit uh, as a function of, of time in minutes. And then we could change our variables once again, just like last time, we can change the change of variables might happen on both ends, seconds uh, to minutes, uh, or rather minutes to, to seconds backwards, right? So, so that's what's in this circle is, is what the starting point. So that's the, uh, uh, the original uh, setup in the original function. Uh, once again, temperature is a function of time. And then we are switching the uh, uh, four minutes to seconds, and we're switching from uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius. Okay, so uh, so as we know, then uh, uh, here it will be once again S does not stand for the second; it stands for the number of seconds, number of seconds, number of minutes, 
number of degrees Fahrenheit and number of degrees uh, Celsius. Okay, so, so the conversion then is uh, the number of seconds if we have uh, converted into minutes you divide by 60, right? So uh, M is equal to well, it probably not not very good choice of variables, um, but uh, I, I guess I already have started this way. Uh, well, well, let's do what we did last time. Uh, we actually had um, uh, x and t. Okay, so so then uh, um, then so that that's I think less confusing. So then uh, x is equal to t over sixty. Uh, well. Yeah, I'm afraid we. I'm doing. I'm going the exact opposite uh, direction. So let's uh, let's uh, let's go back to what we did yesterday. So uh, uh, this will be seconds, and this is minutes. Okay. So then x is equal to 60 t, right? So the same period of time is if you measure it in in minutes, will give will be uh, will be smaller, right? So the number of seconds is 60 times the number of minutes, okay? Okay, and then uh, in the F of C, let, let's hope that that will be okay. So the conversion formula is naturally C is equal to F uh, minus 32 divided by 1.8. Multiple, divided by 1.8. Okay. So uh, so the, uh, the, uh, the, the first one is exactly the same as yesterday. And on the right, the, the main difference is it's not purely multiplication. There is a shift there. Uh, that that's minus 32. Even though you divide by 1.8, it's going to be uh, it's going to be uh, make so, something of a difference. Even though uh, it certainly will not change the uh, uh, the uh, uh, won't change the uh, the derivative um, uh, other than by multiplication. Multiplication so that sub subtraction simply shifts everything uh, vertically. Okay, so a vertical shift, as we know, does not affect the shape of the graph, and therefore it does not affect the, the derivative. Okay, so, so that certainly is easy to verify if we just look at, uh, let's see, what on, on the right. If I look at this one uh, on the right, and once again, I, I, I'm looking at the uh, chain rule. Okay, so what am I getting is dc dx is equal to df uh, dc d f times df dx. Okay. So uh, so then uh, uh, this one is uh, given. This to be found. And this is we we can easily compute uh, from from our expression over there dc df. In that expression is uh, what is it? Uh, Uh, what is the derivative of dc df based on the formula over here? So uh, dif just differentiate 101.8f minus 32 divided 1.8. The second term is in non-important, so it simply will be 1 over 1 1.8. That's the, the derivative of constant. The function is linear, so the derivative is constant. Okay, so, and that, that is a conversion. So converting, uh, now we can, we can describe this verbally. Uh, well, for, let me write it out first. So dc dx is uh, uh, df dx over 1.8. And so we say that uh, converting from from um, Fahrenheit to Celsius, uh, multiply, uh, rather divide, divide the derivative by 1.8. Okay. So once again, this is a function of temperature as it changes uh, with time. Okay. On on right there, on left there is nothing new here. It will be uh, multiplication by multiplication by 60. 
Uh, you you can certainly confirm uh, confirm this if you you can you can simply substitute just just for to remind you what this is all about. I could express exactly uh, based on this c as a function of of t. What is it? It is equal to f minus 32 or divided by 1.1.8. Okay, uh, f being f of x, so it is f of x minus 32 divided by 1.8. And finally, I, I, I substitute x equals 60 t. So it will be f of 60 t minus 32 divided by 1.8. Okay, so, so then you can certainly get the same result without the chain rule, but by, 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 by well, you cannot get it without the chain rule, but uh, you, can, you can do it directly uh, by, uh, by, by uh, differentiating this expression. Okay, so that is one example of slightly different, slightly rather, slightly more complex than the, the two substitutions we looked at uh, yesterday because of the shift. Uh, there is another one, with, uh, uh, a substitution without, with a shift, and that is uh, kind of important, and that is the shift from degrees to radians. Uh, that is a crucial uh, um, substitution. So, because early on, outside of calculus, uh, you 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 can do degrees, you can radi you can do radians, and then all of a sudden you discover that in I, I'm sure I'm not sure if you have uh, just yet, but you you are you are not to use degrees in in uh, uh, um, uh, in, uh, in in calculus. It is always radians, and there is there is one simple reason uh, is is uh, uh, to uh, what is the what what happens to uh, what happens to the derivative? Well, you can already guess what happens to the derivative if we switch back from radians to degrees. So suppose the uh, well, suppose we're talking about um, suppose x x is radians and t is degrees. Okay, so what's the relation? The number of degrees in terms of radians. Uh, Ninety is. Or, Okay. Um, two. Yeah. So no, 90 is uh, pi over 2. 90 degrees is pi over 2, uh, which which g tells you the comp uh, what you have to multiply by. So if x is the number of radians, uh, then uh, what is supposed to do uh, based on this? Uh, what? Uh, the proportion is right there. Well, I mean, they, 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 this probably expression probably better rewritten in terms of x and y. So, uh, so 90 uh, t is equal to pi over 2 x, right? So, well, that, that's pretty much it. Uh, that gives me the substitution. So if you remember one of the uh, equivalency between radians and, and, and degrees, then you can always re re recover that, that function because, because substitution is once again linear, just as every, every single time we have seen. So, uh, so what's the formula for x? Well, we just did, 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 uh, um, solve for x. So it's going to be then uh, uh, x over uh, with a, uh, 45 over pi. That doesn't seem right. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I think I divided instead of multiplying. Uh, so it is uh, 180 by pi. Yeah. Okay. So that's you, you see another equivalence between 100 de in degrees and pi. Okay. So that's the substitution or change of variables. So that's that's what we care about the most. And uh, and then we already know. Oh, I'm sorry. I missed I missed the t over here. Okay, so as you can see, the substitution is uh, uh, is changing from the number of radians to number of uh, of degrees, and uh, we already know by now that that's not gonna go without without consequences. So so and then what happens? And that's 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 what is the derivative of sine x? Derivative of sine is cosine x. Okay. So, and now imagine, imagine that we carried out the substitution. You know what's going to happen to the derivative. 
So replace uh, x with t, not replace, but rather substitute, then, uh, then what happens to the derivative from the previous experience? You multiply by, by that coefficient. That, that coefficient is uh, uh, you multiply by 180 over pi. Okay, so uh, so the uh, so so what? Uh, the point is that that formula that we have will disappear. It will not be as nice anymore. Uh, it's just, uh, so the, the, it will be not the derivative of sine is cosine, the derivative of sine will be cosine with that coefficient. And then the derivative of cosine also will not be negative sine, it will be sine with that, uh, with that coefficient. And then every that coefficient will be reappear, and the, remember that repeated differentiation, you repeat sine differentiation four times, and you start with sine, and you end up with sine, right? However, with this substitution, you do, you, that you will have to multiply 180 by pi four times and that that so so all the nice calculus that that we have known uh, trigonometric functions behave nicely the formula vary they are interrelated uh, in terms of their derivatives with each other uh, that's not going to work anymore so uh, so that that you, you can see how how that's not uh, we, we don't want that uh, that to happen and that that's why we stick to to radians uh, in calculus and whenever necessary, maybe you will convert it, but certainly not whenever we, we speak of functions, not whenever we speak, I mean, it's not, we're not talking about tri 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 triangles here. We're talking about uh, motion, for example. You know, if you are describing any kind of rotational motion, you need trig functions, and they're, they're described with uh, sine and cosine. So it is planetary motion, it is a uh, rotation of its pendulum, it is, uh, 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 so naturally satellites and all, all of that uh, are described with trig functions and, uh, and you don't want to uh, deal with, uh, you, you don't want to never deal with degrees because, uh, well, the, you don't want to ruin a good thing. Okay, so, so that, fair, fair, it's fairly simple. Um, so like I said, the function will be then every time is if a function in, in, in uh, any kind of physics, engineering, or, or uh, mathematics uh, environment uh, or setting, uh, a, the function x of trig functions will be a function of radians. Okay, so um, uh, to put that to rest. Uh, the, the examples, they, we have three, uh, all linear substitution, that is certainly not necessarily the case. Even there, there are uh, almost invariable, you can probably think of hundreds of, of, of variables, uh, of hundreds of units, there are hundreds of substitutions in change of units. Uh, there are a couple of examples that I can think of when the substitution is not linear. Do you know any that you might remember? Nonlinear. A change of units. Uh, there um, uh, are the two examples you, you might remember, but just never thought about. It is uh, earthquakes, the Richter scale. scale. They backwards, backwards? No. Well, what do you mean backwards? Is it like smaller numbers or actually bigger earthquakes? Or is it no, no. It goes goes straight up, but it it is in, it increases the actual power by oh, by, 10. by ten every time. So so one versus two, it's not twice as hard but 10 times between 2 and 3 once again it is 10 times so so it's 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 called logarithmic scale so it increases in the exponentially with the uh, exponent base of the exponent equal to 10 okay so so then the power uh, say x and then you convert it to uh, 10 to x okay that, that's that's what the Richter scale does so the power, I'm not sure how exactly they measure uh, the power, uh, but then they, what they report to us as a power of, of the earthquake is 10 to x power. So if it is, uh, like I said, it is a, a Richter scale 2 and Richter scale 4, they differ by factor of 10. Okay? Uh, another one is, is, uh, is sound. 
you know, decibels, they have the same property. They also uh, increase by uh, disproportionately. The point being, the point being that this is my function. This is my function, 10 to the x. So when we do this uh, substitution, say, say we have, we are talking about, uh, we, we, we are talking about, say, uh, f of x, say y is equal to f of x, and uh, uh, I wish way I want to go, uh, uh, I want to go with the, uh, so suppose it's a function of time, x is equal to uh, f of t, okay, t time, and then I am switching to 10 to x equal f of t. You can imagine that things are big, so t is still time, but the power switched from whatever they that I'm not sure how exactly they measure power, we switched to, to the Richter scale. And then the, suddenly everything becomes, becomes a power, and then a uh, power, power of 10 of x, and, uh, uh, and then uh, um, you, this, that such a substitution will ruin the, um, uh, the, uh, the function to begin with, but you, you can see that in the chain rule it will not be a multiple anymore. So that was easy when you just multiply by 60 divided by 12 or, or divided by 1.8 because the substitutions were linear. When it is not linear, then uh, the dependence become, become much more complex and really it is, it is not, not really, uh, I'm not sure if they actually do it they, in, in, in that, that kind of science because it is, it is, it seems to me kind of inconvenient. Uh, I mean, they, it probably it's like, a, uh, I mean, it makes sense when you're reporting it to, as news, uh, and then you say, well, well, actually, people don't know. You ask a random person, they probably don't know that Richter scale gives you power increasing by 10. Okay, so, and on the other hand, if you look at the sign, so it, it's also, uh, you, your, your, um, your, your power will be then dependent on, um, in a non-linear fashion if you're switching for something that is presumably something more meaningful. Well, if, anyway, I don't really know a lot about this, so I'm just, just pointing out that there, there are other substitution or changes, changes of variables that are non-linear and they are not subject to these easy rules that we have discovered that simply multiply by the factor. When you do the derivative, all you have to do is to multiply by a certain factor. You, all you have to do is figure out what that factor is. Uh, fortunately, that still wouldn't be a problem mathematically because uh, because the chain rule, as you can see, it, it can take any function you can imagine. Right, right here, it doesn't matter what your substitution is. Uh, you you just you just differentiate and multiply the derivatives. That's all. Okay, so uh, so that is uh, that is one thing. And now we're moving to something actually somewhat more challenging, and that is what if what if we do an anti differentiation and, and integration. So so if the original y, one uh, was a uh, change of variables. And furthermore, change of variables and uh, and the derivative. So change of variables and the derivative. Okay, so this is we started talking about derivative right here. Okay, and now same substitutions or more complex. And now uh, now about the integral. So uh, change of variables or or units and the integral. So we already have roughly the idea of what's supposed to happen. The, if the substitution is linear, we'll just go and divide. Uh, whenever we multiplied, we're going to divide. Okay, so, uh, so what I'm talking about is... Um, um, Well, uh, here's an example. Uh, we need to evaluate an integral, say, sine 3x. Okay, so to find an antiderivative, uh, sine 3x. So, so once again, think of it as uh, we know the antiderivative of sine sine x dx is equal to uh, negative cosine x plus c. Okay, so somehow it's a different function altogether. It's a different function altogether, so it's not going to be easy, we, but we, there is no, no, not, no other information for us to use but this. 
so uh, so we, we cannot don't, don't even try to do anything with uh, sine theory x it's uh, well there, there are ways to simplify it probably uh, is there there are so many trick, trick formulas that it's hard to keep track of uh, but we don't need it because we already know what we're talking about it's it's like a substitution of when we had x and uh, uh, or, or t or whatever the, that variable was and we replace it with 3x as if our units have changed by a factor of 3 so you can probably guess what the answer is so guess the answer what negative, three negative. we're going in the opposite direction of differentiation so it will be negative cosine 3x, yes, but the change of variables is the, uh, the, the, that does not affect the antiderivative in the same way as the derivative. It affects it in the opposite, direct, uh, opposite way. So instead of multiplying by 3x as we would have, we divide. Okay. So once again, change of variables if you multiply the variable by constant and you do differentiation, you know that constants such as 3 will appear as a coefficient. Either you think in terms of change of variables, time, whatever we're changing in this particular case, uh, or you think in, the, in terms of the chain rule. Well, just, just to put it side by side so there would be uh, no confusion if we put them side by side, maybe it will be easier to, uh, to avoid it. So sine 3x prime is equal to naturally 3 cosine uh, uh, 3x. Okay, so that's that's the chain rule gives you straight up uh, the answer. And once again, that coefficient three uh, that was here, uh, it becomes a coefficient on the outside. Chain rule. Okay, the derivative of the function on the in, on the inside 3x is three, and that's where the three comes from. Now, uh, and that so that's the derivative. And now integral. We know that everything probably. Uh, 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 going in the opposite direction. So instead of multiplying, we divide. Yeah, I was looking at uh, negative cosine x plus c. Earlier. Plus c, yes. I, did, I thought it was multiplying the, uh, the one beside, that would be beside x. But instead it was dividing. Well, what one? Uh, For the derivative of yeah. just sine x, or the integral. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, well, I guess what I'm saying is, uh, uh, well, I mean, well, you don't have to wonder. You, I, I, just, I just wanted to, you to guess the answer so that uh, if you guess it once, it's, it's easy to remember then. Um, and in the, the match between differentiation and integration should be clear. The opposite, the opposite uh, directions are things are happening in the opposite direction. So whatever happens, we discover about what's happening with the derivative. The opposite probably will happen with the integrals. And, uh, and, then, uh, and then we guess the answer. So instead of multiplying by 3, we divide it by 3. And then, but then uh, ultimately, we have to uh, verify it. And it's really not very hard. How do, how do we verify integration? Uh, we in verify by the differentiation. So, so I have did take my negative 1 third cosine 3x a plus c, in fact, and I differentiate it. Once again, there is nothing other than the chain rule here. We, we, every time what we're looking at is ultimately our compositions. So the, all these substitu substitutions, change of units, change of variables, the same thing. It's, it's, it's uh, compositions. And uh, uh, as compositions, it means that uh, we end up using the chain rule. So all of these are compositions. And so, so I differentiate by the chain rule, and I have uh, negative one-third. I have cosine 3x, and then and then I end up by um, by, by the chain rule. I have to multiply by 3, which is the derivative of 3x. Uh, C naturally disappears, and then as planned, uh, this 3 will go away. I, I missed the minus uh, minus over here, and uh, and then naturally things are okay, cancel out, canceling out. I have cosine. I'm I'm sorry. This is sine. Uh, and I end up with uh, sine 3x. So confirmed. Confirmed. So what does it mean to find an integral? It means to find a function the derivative of which is equal to sine 3x, and we have. Okay.
So um, well, let's try to learn a lesson here, uh, maybe. Um, there, because there is a bigger, big, bigger uh, question here. So suppose if I take about already this, we can we can guess the answer. So I want to have a substitution that unspecified unspecified m. It's like a linear a linear function there. So uh, m x plus b. Uh, the slope is m, b is y-intercept, so what's the answer, if you can guess? Since you're working backwards, yeah. would it be a, uh, I don't know. Well, I mean, it's still, m is still mul the multiple. What, uh, whenever we take the derivative of something, yeah. um, what gives us the linear? Well, let, let me do this, this thing again, uh, mx plus b, and if I differentiate it by the uh, chain rule, I'm going to have uh, cosine, I'm, I'm going to go cosine of the mx plus b still, as just as before, and now I multiply by the derivative of what's inside. So what I end up with is what? mx plus b times derivative of mx plus b? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and so we know that we, when we differentiate, we multiply by m. When we integrate, we're going to divide by m. Just as in the previous example. So it will be 1 over m. So b, b is gone. b doesn't matter, apparently. And I have a negative, uh, well, it's not entirely gone, but it will be negative cosine uh, mx plus b plus c. Okay? So every time we're going in the in the opposite direction. In the so in this particular case, instead of multiplication by m, we divide by m. When does the c come in? Uh, c just uh, comes in automatically in a way. Uh, it is uh, uh, because the derivative of c is zero, and we are looking for f to find all possible antiderivatives. The and we have to have uh, plus c repeated every time. Because without c, then you only give me one antiderivative. And we know there are infinitely many of them. So plus c is just a handy device uh, to point out that I, you do know that you, there are infinitely many of them. Because so plus c is not, there, c is unspecified. And is entirely, it was not even mentioned before. So what you say here is, uh, uh, well, let me put it in words. This is an antiderivative. for any, well, any or all, for each, how about that, for each C, any choice, all possible C. So in other words, you can have plus one, plus two, so naturally plus zero, all of these, infinitely many of them, all real number C you pick, that's an antiderivative. So, so you want to have them all, and that, that is a very, uh, it is done casually. You just have to. You do have to remember what's behind it. It's 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 not meaningless. And there are caveats or or or, or, or problems sometimes you might run into uh, when there are domains domain issues. Remember, I mentioned that. So when there is a hole in the domain, that uh, that that formula doesn't work anymore. So uh, the assumption is always it is on the on the domain, on the on the interval rather, not on the domain, on the interval. On any interval, it works out. Uh, okay, so so we just we just keep it in mind, and uh, in in a way, it is uh, that plus c kind of thing is more important than everything else that we have. We just start talking about not right now because ultimately we're talking about uh, uh, techniques of finding integrals right now. It, that, that's where we are, uh, like a beginning of calculus two, uh, which is a big chunk of it is about uh, computing integrals. And uh, uh, computing integrals is certainly important, but ultimately there there are ways. To find them, to find them. But if you don't understand the meaning of C, then you're missing some very uh, crucial part about uh, about integration. Uh, so, so that's that's why we repeat plus C, and uh, and kind of do it in, in a casual way. So that uh, and the, the why it's casual, but that's why, because when we, it doesn't matter when we start differentiating plus C and plus C is gone. So that's why C is arbitrary. 
So what, what you should have in mind is this once again. That's what pl that's not a good way to make those pictures. But uh, these are a bunch of antiderivatives. They all have the same shapes, but they are shifted vertically, and that C is the shift. Okay, so uh, so let's let's still try to uh, um, find uh, more more lessons here, and uh, well, let's let's see if we have learned. Well, e two x minus one dx. So once again, to refresh your memory, e to the x is e to the x. So what do you think is going to happen? No, uh, no, no. What about uh, what about substitution? It's a, it's as if uh, you don't want to do the substitution. Uh, so we are x being replaced with two x. Okay, so that they cannot be ignored. Remember, it's like with the changing those units from minutes to seconds. There is a multiple there to uh, that has to appear. So what's the multiple? Well, just like the the logic is the same as in the previous example. What's the multiple? One. What? what? Is it one? One? No. <laughs> well, why, why is it one? Look at the multiple of x. x is multiplied by 2, so the multiple is? One half, yeah. one half. It's it's two when you differentiate. Uh -huh. When you anti-differentiate, is one half. Uh, and you you got to see it one again and again how it works out. How when you start that that why is it in the denominator? Because when you start differentiating this, that two will become a multiple. This two become a multiple, and it will cancel one half. So remember, the uh, integration is the opposite direction of anti-differentiation. It is verified, just as we did over here, by uh, anti-differentiation. So, so we got to have a multiple that will be, as we go backwards, would, would, would get canceled. Okay, so and that is indeed get canceled over here. We had that extra coefficient, one-third, and when you differentiate it, 3x, 3 gets out, and we one-third and 3 cancel each other. So that works out every every single time. Uh, so it just comes from, uh, for the most part, from experience. So so if I want to verify and I, I differentiate this, so the chain rule is certainly unavoidable. It is it is it, it is what's going to verify our our computations, our integrations. Uh, so it will be one half e two x minus one prime well plus c uh, is equal to one half. Uh, e to x minus 1 because derivative of exponential function, exponential function, so same function, so I'm not doing anything with the first one, but then I have to differentiate this one. And the derivative of this one is 2. So once again, it checks out because these two things cancel each other. So, so in other words, I, I, I think I, I'm, what I'm saying here is that the good experience with the chain rule is something that you cannot avoid if you're doing any kind of integration. Any, any experience with differentiation will help you uh, to integrate because ultimately you, you, every time you integrate, you verify your integration with differentiation. And with the chain rule, it's especially explicit because it's it, in the, these examples because it's a multiple. And then uh, you have to cancel that multiple, so what do you do? Well, you take the reciprocal of that multiple. Um, so the, the, the formula, I, I'm not sure if you are already um, uh, prepared to, to take a guess uh, what, what's going to happen. Well, let's do one more example. Um, 
So integral of square root of x dx is, is the same as power of x1 half dx. And uh, remember the formula. What happens to the power when you integrate the opposite of when you differentiate? You add, one. add 1. So it will be x1 half plus 1. No, but by, by the same thing, as a matter of fact. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, so it, is, uh, it is, in fact, x 3 halves, 2 thirds here. So sa same idea. Uh, differentiation, uh, differentiation of power function produces a coefficient. If you go in the opposite direction, you have to make sure that that coefficient cancels. And, and that's why you have it upside down. Because if you now you go backwards, you have to cancel this uh, 3 halves. 3 halves differentiate becomes 1 half. And, and the coefficient of uh, 3 halves is to be canceled, and uh, so that's, you, you have a reciprocal. So these are two reciprocals of each other. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about what if I now integrate, well, let's do 2 again, 2x plus 1 dx. So, so we, we can use it, we can recycle the formula. Not recycle, but rather use it. We're going to need it, the formula, so that 2 thirds x uh, 3 halves. So 2 thirds x replaced, x is replaced with, so you start with the same formula, uh, pretty much, uh, uh, with, uh, because, but, but x is replaced with 2x plus 1. So, so I, I am replacing x with uh, 2x plus 1, which is unfortunately is not the whole story. So I have, I have carried out substitution. So the substitution has to be, still has to be done. So I re x replaced with 2x plus 1, I still do it. See, I did it. So in the original formula, x replaced with 2x plus 1, substituted. And now I have the same uh, on the right. But that's not the end of the story, as we know, because uh, because of the of the of the, uh, the because the substitution is is has has a multiple in it and uh, w remember what multiples I guess I guess another way to actually uh, get that to that point through is uh, what multiplication by two it 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 does something to the uh, to the x axis so you have a function of x well let let me before we finish this if I have a function of x looks like this. Okay, y equal f of x. If, uh, what does the graph of y equal, um, so this is x. What if this is 2x? What does the graph look like? It's uh, smaller. It has shrunk. That's right, horizontally shrunk. So, so as you can see, that, that's the, the importance. So let me try to do it. Kind of, it's twice as shrunk like this, probably. Right, so twice, but by a factor of two, it is shrunk towards the towards the x-axis. So, so it changes everything, uh, and so the, the any kind of coefficient replacing x with two x is a big deal. Uh, and then uh, you cannot; it's not just a substitution because it affects what does it affect? It affects the derivative. Look what happens to the slopes. So this transition, what does it do to the to slopes? Slopes are what? That's right. So they are in fact doubled. Okay, so, so either differentiation or anti-differentiation, there will, because of the change of the geometry of the, of the x-y plane, uh, there will be coefficient uh, appearing there. So, um, in, so what is the coefficient? We replace x with 2x plus 1, so what do I put here? Times 2 divided by 2. Divided by 2, right. Uh, because it is... One half. So you stretch it, uh, which means that uh, derivative will be doubled. Derivative slopes or derivatives are doubled, but and derivatives the the exact opposite. So they will be halved. Okay. So and that that is the answer. Then is one third two x plus one three halves. Okay. So uh, so this is uh, uh, the simplest situation. But let's let's take it all the way through. Uh, this is the simplest, what, what I meant to say is the simplest substitution we can think of 
It is the substitution of linear substitution, and it is entirely uh, you end up uh, doing uh, multiplication. It's, it's, uh, you figure out what that factor is, and you divide by it, and that's the end of it. So, so let me try to, to make this the case, a case for that. So, um, so say, well, let, let's say this way. Suppose we already know function f. So f is known. And integral of f of x dx is some, some f of x. So f, f uppercase is an antiderivative. OK? So, so this is known. So f is known, and f, uh, its antiderivative is also known. OK, uh, so now what, what if we want to look at integral of f mx plus b dx? So I am, I'm replacing x with mx plus b, just, just as I did before. So what will the antiderivative be? Once again, just, just like in this example over here, I first do the substitution. So sub, this, this is the substitution, x replaced with mx plus b. So I still carry that out, mx plus b. OK? And there has got to be a coefficient, 1 or m. So this is the number one uh, formula. It's called um, integration by substitution. the linear case, the linear substitution. OK, most of them fix this. So, so once again, substitution. Uh, once it's identified what's happening on the left, I carry, carry it out on the right as well. But I have to have this uh, kind of a uh, uh, coefficient that make up for a possible uh, possible ge change of geometry. So it is 1 over m. Okay, so this way, so with that formula, you can d integrate function easily as long as it's, it's, it's manageable in terms of, uh, uh, in terms of, uh, as long as substitution is linear. Okay, and they are most important ones anyway. So for example, then, so th this is not, a, this is in fact a theorem. Okay, so uh, integration by substitution theorem. Okay, the, not the, the ultimate, the, the final version, but uh, it is a good place to start. So, uh, so let's, let's do it once. So what, what functions do we know? Uh, well, I, I wonder if you remember. Well, let's take something simpler. Uh, say, uh, so compute. Uh, integral of uh, what functions do we have? Uh, well, that, that doesn't really matter. Um, x minus negative x plus seven, three halves. Okay, negative x plus seven, power three halves dx. So that's the problem. So the plan is uh, to to decompose, uh, decompose this into into two two parts. It's it decomposed, meaning uh, presented as a composition. Okay, into two parts. One of them is is a linear substitution. The other one is a fun familiar function. So this is the um, uh, the substitution is uh, u is equal to negative x plus seven, and the familiar function is f of u is equal to what? No, no. Negative x plus seven takes care of whatever is inside the parentheses. So you replace negative x plus seven with u, and you you end up with u three halves. Okay. So so that that way is just that decomposition is why why do I want to decompose it so that I could solve this this problem over here. I I need an antiderivative. I need to integrate that function first. So it's like I break it into two steps. 
uh, I will I will deal with the power three halves first, and then and then now do the next one. So u three halves once again we already know the power goes up, so it will be u five halves, and two uh, fifths here plus c. Okay, so so we proceed this way. So that that uh, is the power formula. So that's that's familiar. Um, we already uh, discussed that. Uh, what happens to powers? We just know how to differentiate, and this time we just do uh, anti-differentiation. And now, now we know we use the formula. We use the formula that f capital. Well, I should have probably indicated that this is f of u is that f capital is an antiderivative of the function. See over here. Um, you can certainly verify that that's the case. Um, uh, just for convenience, I I use the different variables so that the the substitution would be uh, more explicit. So, so that part is this here, the discussion of the function that is needed to be integrated. Uh, and, then, and then the question becomes, uh, what, uh, what, does, what, what effect does the substitution have on the, on, the, uh, on the integral that we actually care about right here? Okay, so, so want to tell me the answer? That's right. So it will in the negative two fifths. So you you putting that negative. Where does negative come from? It is it is the, just the factor uh, the to make up for the uh, anti differentiation. So uh, let me just write it out. Negative x plus seven uh, three halves dx. So we we take our function first two fifth. Do I don't forget to do the substitution again? So uh, u is not u. U is a, is a, a variable that we're going to discard. So it is, in fact, a negative x plus 7. The power that I'm copying everything from what, what I have over there, 5 halves plus c. And the only thing that remains is, is the, that coefficient over here that comes from over here, from the uh, formula. And it is, uh, I, just, I just specify what m is. m is negative 1. So 1 over m will be negative 1 over here. OK, so that, that's the answer. If you look carefully, you can always, uh, if in any doubt, if you're not sure that uh, uh, that you worked out correctly, just imagine differentiating at least either carry out differentiation all the way through, or just imagine how you uh, uh, how you start differentiating this function over there, and uh, by the chain rule naturally. So by the chain rule, and you will realize that negative one inside, negative sign inside in front of x, it is the one that's going to cancel negative sign on the outside. Okay, and that's why we, if you differentiate, you're going to arrive back to this function over here. Okay, so, um, so I hope this isn't too uh, fast. Uh, uh, I'm trying to stretch it over, over in, in, in small uh, pieces. Uh, uh, starting with linear substitution, that's, that's for the most part that's what I'm trying to do. And, um, and once again, this is uh, the formula to uh, remember to begin with. Uh, so once again, a two-stage operation. You're going to do, diff you're doing an uh, integration of a new function uh, on the left, and you do it by, uh, uh, by, by substitution. Uh, but uh, it's not that simple. And so do substitution, so you remove the hard part, the, not the hard part, but the, rather the simple part, the linear part inside. You, you replace it with a new variable such as u, and then you carry out, uh, carry out that integration. So that once you found that integration, you almost almost done because all you have to do, to do it to deal with is that extra coefficient over here. Okay, so that's that's integration. The idea of integration by substitution sometimes it's, uh, it, it will take more uh, complex form uh, later later on. But at this point, linear substitution is always just a uh, um, uh, division, division by that uh, by that extra variable. Okay, so um, maybe one more example of this kind. So as you can see, it's uh, a lot of things come together here. It's that plus c business naturally, uh, then the, the chain rule as well as uh, substitution compositions. All all of the all of these things are here, and. Uh, uh, Okay, so what else? So say compute uh, integral. Uh, what functions haven't I haven't I haven't tried yet? Uh,
Okay, I'm trying to confuse you. So, um, so what do we do with it? You can you multiply um, two separate integrals? Uh, you have only one. You don't have two integrals. Uh, so you can't break that up. No, no, no. The it, it is it is just the same way. You cannot break up uh, uh, derivatives without using the product rule. And we do not have a product rule for, for antiderivatives, unfortunately. Certainly not at this time. So no. So what do we do with it instead? OK, so what do I get? That's right. So OK, that's, you didn't get confused. It is E5x. You might have to tweak the or your function a little bit so that it would take the form that you can actually uh, deal with, and uh, and this this function now becomes familiar, right? So in 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 the sense that it is still uh, an exponential function that with the substitution. So so we would then proceed to integrate e u d u, and we know that it's still e u plus c with a substitution a u equal to five x. And now we are in a very, very familiar situation where we are just, uh, uh, we can carry out our, uh, our integral by, by the uh, integration with substitution. And um, so, so then my integral e5x dx is, so I take the, this part over here and I do the substitution, so e5x plus c and One, one fifth. Okay. So, all right. So that that's roughly uh, how it works out. Um, um, and uh, um, let me carry out the last example one more time in a, a kind of a bridge to to the next level. Um, um, integration by substitution is really about uh, two integrations rather than one. And we just did the one of the integrations so quickly that because it's linear so it wasn't wasn't too hard to uh, to do. But this is this is how I could interpret it more more explicitly is it is literal integration by substitution. So so this is what uh, uh, the way it is um, um, I hear here how it works out. Uh, so we take out my substitution, we I, I make it explicit. So explicit so suppose we, we we're starting over with the same integral over here, and what I do is I say u is equal to 5x. So every time I see a composition, almost invariably in 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 an in integral, then uh, I that that the function on the inside will be my new variable. So that's a new variable. Okay. So and then what I do is I want to. Um, I want to convert, literally convert the integral uh, of x to an integral of u. The hope is that the new integral will be simpler. And uh, we, we, we have a good chance that it's going to happen. We just have to do it in a, in a, careful, uh, in a careful manner. Uh, and uh, because because it, it's 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 still about substitution. It's just not not that simple. Because look at it. Uh, if I try to so let's say substitute. So I have my integral e five x dx, and then I know that my u is five x. So well, let's substitute. Okay, e to the u. Unfortunately, unfortunately, there is that extra term dx, it's not going away. And so this actually looks pretty bad. Now why is it bad? Because we have two variables mixed together. They actually depend on each other, and yet they are, they are really not uh, interacting each other. So we haven't converted the integral to u yet because dx is still uh, is there. Yeah. 
That's right. That's exactly what's going to happen. Uh, so what is dx? So find dx. And dx is actually easy to find because, uh, because what? Because du dx is 5. u is equal to 5x, so du dx is 5. And if that's the case, then my dx is equal to uh, du over 5. Okay? So, so it means that this unfinished substitution here can be finished. And it will be entirely an integral with respect to u only. It will be eu. And I substitute, I'll have du over 5. Okay, and then, and then we have uh, that same integral that we saw previously, but it's, it's uh, much simpler. It's so one-fifth, eu du. I am integrating with respect to this new variable that makes me just made my life easier in a, in, in a, in a, min, in a second, right? Look at it. It was e5x and now e to the u. It is an entirely familiar integral. So it will be one-fifth e to the u plus c. We're done with integration. All that remains is just back substitution. So this is substitution 1, substitution 2, substitution of u, then substitution of dx, and now it's back substitution. For the, the only reason is because we don't want to, we, we don't care about u, we don't need u. We, we, we were asked about x, and so the answer should be in terms of x. So it will be 1 fifth, 1 fifth, uh, e to the x, e to the 5x plus c. And that's the, the final answer, which is uh, the same set of computations they originally uh, with that formula, but it is, uh, it is just more, uh, more explicit, and it is subject to, or rather, uh, more complex uh, uh, integrals might be subject to this idea, because uh, that, that substitution, that if we learn how to do this part, uh, then uh, it doesn't matter what our substitution is, it doesn't have to be linear anymore. Okay, that, that, that was the, our assumption, the simplifying assumption was that it is, it is linear and that is why uh, we did it. And we had a very simple formula. You remember that, that, um, that just nothing but a coefficient. So this will be more complicated uh, eventually, but as you can see, it, even with linear substitution, it, it, is, it is worthwhile. As you can see, this is what I'm talking about, uh, the explicit substitution um, rather than implicit substitution, what, which is what the, uh, the formula uh, says, and that's what I did here. So we, we sort of uh, replaced, replaced. It's not literally substitution. We didn't carry out the substitution in a literal sense. And, and we did not convert the old integral to a new integral, uh, uh, which is okay because the formula is so simple. And they, it is, uh, even though this method is more uh, broadly applicable, uh, the last one, uh, this formula, I do encourage you to use it because it's just so simple and uh, much less likely to make any kind of mistake. There's also some, some very explicit uh, uh, ideas behind it. Remember, change of, uh, change of units. So uh, whenever the substitution is linear, uh, it is probably in some sense related to uh, change of units. And, uh, and so then you remember that you only have to divide by, all you have to do is just divide by that, uh, that extra uh, coefficient. Okay, so, uh, so we'll, I guess we'll just uh, continue with this next time and uh, we'll develop this into something more um, um, powerful. Okay.